This tour is coming like con todo. I told myself, I'm going to do everything I want to do. And I don't care what anyone has to say. I just want to make my audience happy. Y se acabó. For the first time, I have like a theme when it comes to wardrobe. Leather and jean and bandanas because that's who I am. That love that I get from the people that go see me, it still blows my mind. That people took the time out of their night, they could be anywhere else in the world, and they decided to buy a ticket to a cheeky show. Hello and welcome to another episode of Cheekies and Chill. I'm your host, Cheekies, and let me tell you, I'm super excited about this episode because today I'm pulling back the curtain on my Abeja Reina tour. We're going to be talking about everything from makeup and wardrobe to how I decide which songs I'm going to perform, or sea, my set list, and be sure to stay tuned until the end for some juicy Q&As. So sit back, grab a drink, and enjoy this episode of Cheekies and Chill. Oh yes, life on the road. It's actually one of those things I enjoy the most about being a singer. And I'm going to tell you why, because I personally like staying at hotel rooms. That's weird, right? But I do. I feel like I'm on vacation in a weird way, but I'm actually there to work, but I get to relax more. I don't know. I feel like it's more me time. And now regarding my album, recording it, Abeja Reina, I'm done, officially done recording the album. But I want to say that this one was, I think, the toughest to, to finish. The studio to me is a very personal place. No me gusta que haya mucha gente. Like I like to be kind of by myself. I like, you know, the lights to be dimmed. I like candles to be lit. I drink a little bit of tea. For a long time, you guys, going to the studio was like a drag because you can hear every single mistake when you're in the studio. So it was like I felt very intimidated for the lack of a better word. Like, I just felt like, oh my gosh, like I almost preferred singing live than in the studio because like literally it's just, you feel closed in. And with time and with experience now, I've learned to love the studio. I just feel like it's me time. It's me and the mic and I get to express myself and I get to release tension. And yes, it's a little stressful because I'm a perfectionist and I want everything to come out right. I'll do take after take after take until I get it exactly how I want it. But it helps me release. I forget about everything in the world. And I just focus on that track that I'm recording. And I'm not one to like sit there and finish my record in two weeks. Like there are people that say, okay, I got my songs. I'm going to go in there and I'm just going to like record my album, my entire album in two weeks. I can't do that. I'm more of like, I have the song. I'm going to go in there. I live with the song. And that's why it's taken me almost two years to finish Abeja Reina. So anyways, let's go back to the tour. Because I just got back from my second date, which was in Dallas. Uh, the first one was in Paula Casino and it was sold out. So we started off with the right foot. You guys, Paula Casino, everyone that was there, thank you so much. It was a sold out show and Dallas was too. So that's exciting. And now we're going to be going, I have one in Northern California and then I'm going to be going to Mexico with the tour. The album comes out May 12th. Así que ya pueden esperarlo. El día 12 de mayo sale eh, el disco Abeja Reina. Y pues I'm going to be in Mexico haciendo este, la gira de, de promoción. Voy a estar haciendo unas presentaciones. So I'm really excited. I'm going to be in El Paso too. So the tour, the dates are going well. Mr. Bull, my manager, keeps adding dates. <laughs> And I'm like, I'm going to tell you, it's crazy because before every show, I'm very, very nervous. Like I get so nervous. And then when I get up there, I'm like, oh, okay, cool. So I'm like, I'm in el agua. Like I'm just like, I know how to do this. Like what am I tripping off of? But I get so nervous and I feel like It's good to be nervous, though, because that means that you're passionate about what you're doing. And I don't know, siento que los nervios son buenos. But it is tiring, especially because I want to give my very best, especially with this tour, because the set list took me four hours to put together, you guys. Four hours on a Sunday. I need to, like, envision the song. I need to, like, listen to the songs back to back to see if the flow goes well, because I want people to obviously start on a high note and then bring them down. And, you know, I sing love songs, canciones de desamor, and then songs to my mom. And I cry a little bit sometimes. Sometimes I do, sometimes I don't. These last two shows I have, I've cried. And then I bring them back up. So it's like, for me, it's like, what do I want to see as a fan? That's why it's so important. Like how I want the intro to look, what I want to say in the intro before I go on stage, the first song I want to sing, removing certain songs that don't go with the flow. You know what I mean? And it's hard because a lot of 
OG fans want to hear songs from my first album. But now this is called the Abeja Reina tour. So I have to add the songs that make sense with the story I'm trying to tell because that's what I'm doing with this show. I'm telling a story. I'm bringing you on the Abeja Reina experience. So it can be stressful. It can be very tiring. It's late nights, you guys, but it's worth it. It's been worth it because that love that I get from the people that go see me, it still blows my mind. It blows my mind to know that people took the time out of their day, out of their night. They could be anywhere else in the world and they decided to buy a ticket to a cheeky show. And I just feel like this responsibility in a good way to give my best to make sure that that hour and a half, that hour and 45 minutes that you're with me and listening to me, that you're enjoying every single part of my show, even if something goes wrong, because especially on the first show, shit went wrong with the monitors, with the DJ, like certain songs didn't come in when they were supposed to and things that I see, but maybe even the audience doesn't notice, but I notice it and it bothers me. But even that, I'm very like, I go with the flow. I'm just like, you know what? It is what it is. It's the first show. I tell the audience I'm very open, but because I want them to know that it's important to me that the money that you're investing in my show, I want it to be completely worth it. So for me, it's like, I take that shit serious. I take it so serious because it still blows my mind. I'm just like, wow, all these people are here for me. Like when you guys are singing, you know, the songs, those of you that have been with me on tour or have been with me to one of the shows, like sometimes I'm like, oh my God, like, I want to sit there and just cry like a little baby. Like, I'm just like, oh my goodness, these people love me. It just feels so beautiful. (laughs) But then I'm like, no, you got to be a bad bitch. You got to be a bad bitch. Uh Uh-uh, you got to get up. (laughs) You can't be crying. So I'm just like, you know, come on, let's go, you know? And and it's it's a little hard. But now I feel like I've gotten the hang of it where I'm like, it's okay to cry a little bit, but you got to pick it up. I've learned to get the hang of that because girl or boys, men and women that are listening, I'm a cancer and we could be very emotional creatures. So controlling my emotions has been a task in itself, especially on stage, but I think I think I've dominated it. Now, talking about my band, La Banda. It's very hard. Very, very difficult to find a, a responsible banda because músicos can be un poquito distraídos and of course, especially like if we don't have like a full-on tour with like I don't know, 100 dates, it's a little hard because the banderos, the musicians, they have other jobs and they have families that they have to provide for. So sometimes they come and they go. So that's been a little bit, I think, the most difficult thing since I started my career is finding a banda that is going to stick. And I think I finally found one. And it just gives me so much peace of mind because I've been working with this guy and he's like the manager and the head of the banda. So even if one leaves, he makes sure that he finds, you know, another trompeta And he puts them in line and they rehearse because rehearsing is so important. I was actually in Brownsville for about, I don't know, like a week, like four or five days rehearsing because before I would rehearse one or two days, but I was like, I need to set these days aside and rehearse so that we have that connection. And you could tell we're family, me and my musicians, you know? And that the flow goes well. Even if we mess up, we know where to pick up. It's very important to have that relationship with your musicians. Que yo sepan y me conozcan bien. And I think finally, thank God, I have found that and I feel very comfortable. And and I think rehearsing, and that's one thing that it's like, you got to be disciplined enough to say, I'm going to set days aside for whatever it is. Even if you're not a singer, it's, it's just really striving and seeking that knowledge and practicing and rehearsing and making sure that you are intentional about giving your best at whatever it is that you're doing. And so to me, rehearsing is super important. I like to be at my sound checks because every stage is different. Every sound is different. Every mic is different. I have my own mic, but even like at the Paula, I wasn't able to use my personal mic. So I was worried because I'm like, wait a second, this is my mic. You, you grow an attachment to your mic. So when they said, oh, we can't connect it, we don't have the device to connect your mic. I had to use one from theirs and I was a little nervous, but then I did my sound check and I was like, okay, cool. Like I got the feeling the mic and I became one and I was like, all right, make sure that this is the mic I'm going to use because I'm already leveled out. And that's one thing, like I've seen it myself when I go to my sound check, sometimes I'm the only one there when it's like a bunch of artists and they just send their musicians. But for me, it's like, I want to be there. I want to feel the stage. I want to see what I'm looking at. I want to be able to go to every corner and know, like not just walk up on stage and not know what I'm doing. So for me, it's like when they say practice makes perfect, that's just the truth. 
believe me, you guys, there's these are things that you guys don't see. There are some people that I'm sure can say or want to say, ah, no canta, no sabe de esto, no sabe del otro. Like, I'm sorry, but I'm not taking that shit no more. Now I'm like, I know exactly what I'm doing and I have put in the hard work and I know about music. I know what I want, especially with this album, especially with this tour. Like I put everything, I put the set list together. I put my track list for my album together. I did the intros and I wrote everything. Like I know what I want to hear. I have the ear. I mean, I was raised in this, you guys. Like I was born in the music. Now I'm like, wait, I'm not going to let anybody's negative comments steer me from believing in myself and knowing I know what I'm talking about. And not only that, I put the work. I, I really do. Like I, for me, it's important. Even more so for me because my mom is who she is and I have been constantly compared to her. And people may think, oh, Chiki's probably watches her mom and because I've gotten it a lot. We're like, oh my God, Chiki's like, you made me cry because I do meet and greets after the shows, right? And I have the conversations with, it's not just take a picture with me and bye. No, I'm like, how did you like it? Did you enjoy yourself? And like, oh my God, yes, Chiki's like, you made me cry. I saw your mom so many times. Like, you look so much like her. Like, I went to her, her concert and, and it's crazy because it's not like I sit there and watch my mom. I still to this day can't watch my mom, you guys. It's still very hard. Just maybe like a few months ago, I watched the reality show and I was watching it there, but I can't watch it for long. It gets still hard for me to sit and watch my mom's concerts because it makes me miss her. So it's not like I sit here and study my mom. It's just, I'm her daughter. No sé, like, a la gente que quiera decir, ah, esta se cree como su mamá o hace los movimientos de su mamá. Absolutely not. Si me sale algo, es porque me sale algo naturalmente because she's my mom. People that try to talk shit about it, first of all, it's kind of like, yeah, well, who do you want me to look like? You know what I mean? Like, who do you want me to act like? That's like, that was my mother, my father, my friend, my boss. I, I don't understand. And it's been 10 years, you guys. It's going to be 10 years in December, but es algo que tengo en la sangre. The thing here is, it's important for me that I give my best to you guys, which means I'm going to make it to my rehearsals. I'm going to make it to my sound check. I'm going to make sure that every piece of my show has a touch of cheekies here and there, especially with this tour. I'm putting in a DJ. I added a DJ. I have a saxophone. A lot of people in regional don't have a saxophone. I have a saxophone. I added a saxophone. I added a DJ because there are times when I want to get crazy and I, and I want to like twerk on stage and I'm going to do that. And I want to have my DJ there to play a song for me. And while I'm talking, I want little beats because I want to rap. So this tour is coming like con todo. I told myself I'm going to do everything I want to do. Cumbia, banda, a little bit of urban. I, I rap a little bit. Depends on how buzzed I am. I'm going to do it all in this tour. And I don't care what anyone has to say. I just want to make my audience happy. Con placer a mi público. Y se acabó. Ya la gente criticona me vale puritita madre, you guys. Puritita madre me vale la gente criticona. I feel like my balls just dropped. Like, I don't know how to explain it. I knew and I I've always been a confident woman, but this confidence that I feel, especially now on stage, I feel so different. I feel like that's the best way I can explain it. Like, my balls dropped. Like, I'm a woman now. And you guys are going to be able to see it. For those of you that are going to go to my shows, que van a ir a mis presentaciones, van a poder ver y sentirlo. Ya me lo han dicho. Ya me dicen, chiquis, I was at your last show before you started this tour. And oh my goodness, I feel and I see and I hear the difference. And that's what makes me so happy because I always say we are our own competition. I want to just be better than I was my last tour. I want to be better than I was my last album. Like it's just growing and learning more. So now that we talked about the music and all that stuff that's super important, now I can tell you guys about my wardrobe. I think this is the first time with all those shows that I've done with the tours that I've done. I've had the Aprovechame tour. I've had the Playlist tour. Now this is my Abeja Reina tour. And for the first time, I have like a theme when it comes to wardrobe. Before I would just put outfits together and like, that's it. Like it was like a jumpsuit. Like my whole thing has always been like rompers, jumpsuits, you know, like one pieces because I wanted to be comfortable. Now we have a theme going. For Abeja Reina, it's leather and jean. So mezclilla con un poquito de negro. And bandanas, like I want to bring in that Long Beach into like, I love my Tejana. So I'm putting like my bandana around my Tejana. I'm doing bandana patches all over my clothes because that's who I am. I'm the 200%, you guys. I am 100% Mexicana, 100% American. And I want to be able to implement that in my shows. 
And I want to have long hair because I love fans. Okay. Like fans, fans. Yeah. Like human fans. But I also love like fans, like los abanicos, because I want my hair to blow and I want to have like those moments, you know, especially for pictures. So I think of everything. So I'm like, okay, I want my long ass extensions. I want my makeup to be not too heavy because sometimes I cry. So I don't like my makeup to be too cakey. I just want like lashes, a little bit of shadow, very glowy, and the hair has to be long with my Tejana. So I was very proud of myself because I've been wearing my Tejana throughout like almost the entire show. Usually I would take it off, like it would bother me, but like, I just feel like I'm having like a really good relationship with my Tejana. So now I want Tejanas in red and black and blue and pink. So you guys will be able to see a lot more of that. Oh, and I'm getting like 10 different outfits done and custom to my body for this tour. So you're going to be able to see different outfits, but it's going to be 10 outfits custom made for this tour. So I'll be able to switch them out between dates and stuff. So it's saving me money. I've learned. I'm like, okay, wait, like I can't just be buying a new outfit for every show. Like I have to buy a series of them and change them, you know, have them for this tour. And I want to save them because I want to be able to have my own like museum one day of like wardrobe, have a whole plan. And when I'm on tour, it is important for me, especially the day of the show to work out. I do cardio because I feel like it just gives me more energy, obviously, and it helps my vocals like clear my throat. So I'll do cardio in the morning. Sometimes I do weights. It just depends. And I try to eat as clean as I can on show day because my stomach gets bloated really quickly. So I like to have just algo light, especially before my show, like a protein shake or some chicken or a soup or something that's not too heavy so that I can just feel comfortable on stage after the show is another story. <laughs> because after the show, I've done so much cardio on stage that I get really hungry. I'm not gonna lie, I try to watch what I eat. But honestly, like my body craves bread and wants sugar. So there are times where I'm just like, okay, instead of having two tacos, I'll have one. But after the show is cuando me da un chingo de hambre. So si, me doy mis, mis gustos. And I'll have especially something sugary because it's like, it's a lot of energy you give out, you know? And especially me, I do my show, my hour and a half show. And then I do meet and greets after, usually anywhere from 80 to 100 people of meet and greets. And I sit there and I'm standing and I'm taking pictures and I'm like talking. So by the time we're done, a bitch is hungry. So I eat, okay? <laughs> now, a lot of people might think that after my shows, I get crunk and I get crazy and I drink and I continue drinking. I don't. I think I can count on one hand, maybe literally three times Se me hace mucho. It's a lot if I've partied after a show, especially because I do my meet and greets after my show. I like to just eat, put on my PJs, take off my makeup and maybe watch a movie and relax. It's very, very extremely rare if I go out and I party afterwards or I have after parties. And even if I say I'm going to have an after party, like the time that I performed at the Grove, I had this whole thing planned. I had invited all my friends. Uh, we were going to party afterwards. It was like the last day of my playlist tour. And we were supposed to party at the Roomba Room, my friend's club. Everyone went after my meeting greets, dude. I was exhausted and I was way too buzzed. So I went to my room and I ordered food and I fell asleep. And everyone was waiting for me at the after party. And I felt so bad because <laughs> I was like, I'm, I'm a homebody. I'm introverted. Like, it's crazy because I feel like when you're on stage, you're giving so much of yourself that I felt like sometimes I feel like going to an after party and mingling and stuff, it's just sometimes it's too much. Like I've learned that what I do is I'm extroverted. That's cheekies. But Janae is introverted. I like to be with the people that I feel comfortable with. I like to be in my room. I love watching movies. I love reading books. I love just even eating in bed. That makes me so happy. <laughs> so I'm not that much of a party animal. But when it's time to party, I party. I can throw back those tequila shots y me la paso muy bien. Pero está muy cabrón si estoy trabajando y también hacer party está muy cabrón. I, I, I can't. That's just me, guys. And people ask me this all the time. Like, do I go sightsee when, like, for instance, like when I was in Dallas, I'm very to myself. I like to spend a lot of time in my room. I'll go to the gym. Most of the time I eat in my room. It's very rare when I go out to a restaurant when I'm on tour because I'm so focused and I'm so about like what I'm doing and the task ahead. 
that I don't really enjoy much. I want to get better at it though. Like see and visit landmarks and take pictures and stuff like that mingle a little bit more. But for the most part, about 90% of the time, I stay in my room and I just read and I relax so that I can have as much energy for my show. But I will admit I want to get better at seeing a little bit more of the world (laughs) and not just be in my own world in my room. So now we come to the rapid fire questions. You guys remember I said to hold to the end because we're going to have some Q&As. Okay, number one, first memory of being on stage. Well, the first one that comes to mind is when I did Esa No Soy Yo en Premio Juventud, I want to say 2015. And it was my first single that was playing on, on the radio. And it was like my first performance ever launching my career on television. So I remember that. It was like this whole thing, whole production thing. It was awesome. But I was shaking you guys like you have no idea. And I always say that first performance, I feel like it wasn't me. Like I feel like something took over my body because I, it went by so fast and I don't remember any movement I'd make. Like even when I go and watch that show now, like you go on YouTube and watch it. Like I'm like, I don't even remember doing that. It was just, I don't know, something took over my body. It's the craziest thing. Now I pray for like, I ask God, I want to be completely present on my shows. I want to feel it. I want to know exactly what I'm doing. And thank goodness, we're much better with that. A favorite city to play and why? Ooh, my favorite city. Jeez Louise. Okay. Well, besides LA, I love Dallas. That's one of the places where I just sang um, in Dallas. Like it's one of my favorite places. It's an intimate restaurant, sort of feel like nightclub. And I've always really enjoyed it. The stage is very small there, but the feeling that I get is crazy. Like los aplausos, el calor de, del público is just, it's so beautiful. Like that's one of my favorite places. I always look forward to going to Dallas to that one specific place. And they've offered me bigger places. They're like, okay, you know, you could do a one night here and it's X amount of people. But I'm like, I, I don't know. I, I want to keep doing El Pulpo se llama, El Pulpo en Dallas. It's just, it's fun. I don't know. I feel great. I love being there. Okay, how do you choose your first and last song? Ooh, especially with this tour, Abeja Reina, I just felt like it was the most appropriate thing to start with the song Abeja Reina that still hasn't come out. It's it's a part of the album. It's still not a single. A lot of people haven't heard it. I wanted to give my audience, the people that go watch me sing with this tour, something special, a gift. So I'm like, I need to start with a strong song, a high note, and end with a high note. For me, it's like, I want to leave people wanting more. So I always end with Completamente, which is one of my most popular songs. It's called Completamente Tuya. And I always end with that. I just want it to become like a thing, like brand that, you know? So it's always start with a high note and end with a high note, you know? And everything else in between will work out. Okay, worst experience with a fan? Any unruly ones? Um, Well, okay, talking about this place in Dallas, there was this one guy, uh, a boss bee, a king bee. I'm not going to say his name, but he, it was like, you kind of have to sit there because if, if you don't sit, then the people behind you can't see you when you're on stage. So there was this one fan that kept standing up and screaming and stuff and people were getting upset and the security had told him a few times to just sit down. And he was just excited. He was drunk and having a great time. And he's one of my biggest fans and I love him so much. I was singing to the left side of the stage and from the corner of my eye, I could see that something was happening on the right side of the stage. And next thing you know, I see the security guard grab the guy from his neck and bring him down to the floor. And I just stopped everything. And I'm like, wait a second. You are not going to do that. Like, of course, I respect with the security guards. That's their job. They need to like calm people down. But I just felt like it was just way too much. And I had to stop everything, the music, And I think they even caught this moment on TikTok where I was like, wait, don't do that. Like, I'm not okay with that. But for me to have like a bad experience with a fan like me personally, I haven't. I actually had a bad experience with one of my mom's fans. I was selling posters at one of her concerts. I would sell the posters and the CDs and the shirts and stuff. I I had one of the posters in my hands. I was about to give it to someone else and she snatched it out of my hand. So I turned around and I grabbed it back. and my mom's fan bit me on the arm. Like she literally bit me 
I had bite marks and I was like, <gasps> and I screamed and my mom was busy doing something, but she heard her child scream, me. And she's like, what happened? And I told her, I was like, she just bit me. Oh my goodness. My mom slapped that lady so bad. Like she slapped her. She's like, don't you ever put your hands on my daughter. I will never forget that day. I felt so bad for the girl because I don't think she knew I was my mom's daughter, but it's like my mom at that moment was not the artist. She was the mother. So sacó las uñas. Dude, that lady bit me so hard. I thought I was going to bleed. <laughs> my mom just heard me scream and she was like, what's, what's wrong with my daughter? So for me, I think that was like the worst experience with the fan, but not necessarily one of my fans. Oh, actually, one time, now that we're talking about it, a lady flipped me off. I was in Mexico and she was flipping me off with both her fingers. And I was like, I flipped her back off too. I said, girl, if you don't like it, if you don't, si no te gusta mi show, vete. And I had the security guards take her out because I'm like, you are not going to disrespect me. I'm here working. I'm doing my thing. And you're there flipping me off. So I flipped her back off and I said, you better go. So that was one. Anyways, most embarrassing moment on stage. Ooh, most embarrassing moment. Um, well, it's always with wardrobe and my butt because I got a big ass. So the pants were too tight. I was twerking. Isas, my pants ripped right in the crack of my ass. Thank goodness I had medias. But still, I had like medias where you could still kind of see my, my booty crack. That was like, I think, the most embarrassing moment on stage. And I told them, I said, sorry, guys, se me rompió. <laughs> and they had to come on stage and put like little alfileres and, you know, to cover it for the time being. But it was, I just didn't turn around the rest of the show. Okay, next. What's the one song you always have to sing? The one song I always have to sing, I think, is Completamente. Absolutely. That's the song that I finished my set list with. That video has the most views on YouTube, Completamente Tuya. And I have to sing it because I dedicate it to my fans. I'm like, I'm yours. So completamente tuya. That one, y esa no soy yo. Those are two songs that if I do a show, I have to do those two songs. With whom would you love to share the stage? Ooh, that's a good question. I've shared stages with a lot of people that I, I love, that I've wanted to, like my sister Jackie, my uncle Lupe, my tío Gus, Grupo Firme. Julian Alvarez, he invited me once. I'm a huge fan of Julian Alvarez, you guys. So he invited me once. I went to his show and he invited me to sing on stage with him. Dude, that's a great question. I think Carol G. I would love to share stage with Carol G. All right, Dream City venue to perform. Ooh, I, I have on my vision board the Microsoft Theater. I like to do short-term goals. Of course, I would love to sell out the, the crypto here in Los Angeles. That would be like a dream, of course, but like my shorter term venue right now and, and short term goal would be the Microsoft Theater. Okay, how would you describe your feelings right after a show? Ooh, I am hyped. Uh, the adrenaline is like to the top. I think after my show, I'm just like, the first thing I do is I like, thank God. I'm just like, thank you, God. I got that done. But yeah, more than anything, it's like, oh, we did it. <laughs> I think more than anything, it's it's that type of feeling where it's like, I feel relieved. I feel satisfied. Siento realizada. Okay, so are you superstitious at all? Do you have any rituals you do before performing? Mm, this is a good one. Before my show, it's super important for me to pray. I like to pray by myself, uh, have some time to myself. I have Palo Santo. I love Palo Santo and incense. So I light that before every performance. With the Palo Santo, me lo paso por todo el cuerpo. And I say I'm protected. I always say this. God, give me the mind of Jesus. Give me words of excellence so I can remember my song so that I could sing great. I put hands over my throat and I'm like, God, anoint my voice. And I pray with my team. And I always wear like a certain bracelet that just I feel gives me strength. It could be mental, whatever, but for me, it just helps me. And I feel like I'm protected and I could just go out there and give my all without having to worry about something, quote unquote, bad happening, you know? Pero siempre me acomiendo a Dios. For me, it's like, it has to be done. I have to get on my knees. I have to thank God. I have to pray. And then I go out there and do my thing. So that's all the time we have, guys. Hopefully I see you at one of my upcoming shows. But before I go, I'll leave you with a motivational quote. Be strong, but not rude. Be kind, but not weak. Be humble, but not timid. Be proud, but not arrogant. Thank you guys again for supporting my music, my shows, and this podcast. I am so grateful. I love you, and I hope you have an awesome week. Thank you for listening to Cheekies and Chill. 
This is a production of iHeartRadio and My Cultura Podcast Network. Follow us on Instagram at My Cultura Podcasts and follow me, Chiquis, that's C-H-I-Q-U-I-S. For more podcasts from iHeart, visit the iHeartRadio app, Apple Podcasts, or wherever you listen to your favorite shows. Thank you.